Johnson & Johnson has a, an aggressive corporate social responsibility program and a trust fund to back it up. And here with us today on NCAD Knowledge is Frank Wilvert. Thank you for being with us. You're the uh, director of, or the managing director of the trust and the director of corporate social responsibility at Johnson & Johnson for Europe, Middle East, Africa. What exactly is the Johnson & Johnson Corporate Trust? How does it complement your business model? Well, it's a, a recent kind of venture uh, for J&J &J in the sense that in the region, you know, we are highly decentralized and uh, that has many advantages. But sometimes when you talk about corporate responsibility or by extension sustainability or however you want to call it or corporate citizenship, you need to bring some clarity in what the framework is that is underpinning this concept. And uh, a couple of years ago, we were looking at sort of key principles of, of the management of J&J &J, and you will see four things. First of all, the, one, the first one is focus on healthcare. We're a healthcare corporation, so that's what it's all about. Let's not venture off in other areas, that's where our competence lies. The second thing is we're a values-based corporation. We have a credo, meaning that we have a responsibility to our customers, to our, basically to our workers, to our, uh, the people who make it happen in the company, to the communities where we grow up, and fourthly then to the shareholders. So that's the value set that is underpinning. And the last one I think is a very important one, uh, as we have been around for more than a century, uh, is commitment to the long term. If you then translate these principles, which are business principles, into the way how you interact with stakeholders, you, you very quickly come to a very clear kind of framework. The trust is the only structure basically within the, the overall J&J &J family of companies operating in the, in the uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa region. And I think in terms of the, the fourth element, I would say the, the um, commitment for the long term, I think the trust provides us with that opportunity to become what I would say an incubator for social change. When was it started? Uh, 2007. All right, so it's, and, and why did you decide to put it into a trust? I mean, was it it's a separate funding mechanism or you wanted to be sure it was ironclad or what? Well, we worked through what I would say intermediate structures before. And uh, the problem when you work with intermediate structures is that, first of all, there are issues, I would say, inefficiencies. You have you, to take their structure. Yeah, you have to accept that and there are things you want to do, but in the end you will always have to go through a third party to achieve that. The thing, however, we wanted to avoid is that structures like these who are outside the corporate structure, they're independent, they have only one mission, that is to serve the public good and not commercial kind of, um, I would say, commercial uh, objectives, is you, you need to make sure that when you create something like that, it does not lead the life of itself and it becomes disconnected. And that is the job that I have, is to, to build on the internal resources. Where, where does the money come from or where did it come from and does, are there any outside sources? Uh, there are no outside sources, so I'd say the primary sources for the trust today is a global corporate resource, which is happening worldwide within J&J, &J, and there is an allocation to our region. Uh, operating companies contribute to that, but based on specific objectives they would have in a given market context or in a given country based on the needs. Uh, and I would say a third one is that sometimes in a number of specific projects we would work with other companies together and they may actually decide to transfer money into the trust to do joint projects. So it's like a, a non-commercial joint venture type of approach. So you do have kind of a partner network that might... First of all, I think INSEAD is one of the, the most important partners in, in that structure, especially in one of our four core areas, which is management, uh, building management capacity for healthcare. Uh, another, I would say, important example is the Aga Khan Development Network, which is the global network which is business and non-profit from, uh, from the Aga Khan. Headed by an INSEAD alum. So what we do, we do not work on the basis of proposals. So it's not like a, a structure that is sitting there and waiting for interesting proposals to come on the table where, to be honest, you look at the last page and say, how much do they want? Because that's the most important page. We, we do it slightly different in the sense that we identify, we have a global framework has four kind of pillars. One is management capacity building. Secondly is the link mother and baby and saving lives as such. The third one has to do with improving the quality of life through prevention and education, especially in the settings of chronic diseases. And the fourth one we have is to advance corporate responsibility, sustainability thinking as part of our mission as a corporation to work together with others in relationship with stakeholders. So in all these four areas, which is a global framework, we have 
links with different partners. How do you determine which, which programs to support where you could actually make a difference, where you're not wasting your time or money? You do a kind of, what I would say, an assessment of, of stakeholder, or you do stakeholder mapping, and you look at what, what is really, what is important here. Uh, the reason why we came to a program like Innovators for Community Wellness in United Arab Emirates is you just have to look at the statistics. And you say, okay, if we operate here and you look at our four pillars, we need, this is dealing with education and prevention around chronic care. There's a big issue here. How can we intervene and have impact? Taking into account that your impact, especially in the prevention area, may take 10 years before it produces that kind of change of, of people's minds. The second most important thing in the story is you need a partner you can trust, you share a common set of values with, and you agree that you will work together even if there's no project on the table. And that is the way how we started with the Aha Khan Development Network. We had like six months of talks, conversations about, in their case, about uh, even Islamic culture, because the background of them, of course, is, is Islamic. We looked at some of the approaches around early childhood development, and we said, you know, we have very common kind of values. You also are in there for the long term. Can we connect that? And then you start connecting your value set, and you identify over time a portfolio now that is covering, I think, six, seven countries, that is stretching from early childhood development to nurse education to what I would say uh, community healthcare in, in, in settings in places like Cairo or even in Lisbon with, with migrant communities. So it is not J&J that supports or pays for a program. We sat together at the table and designed what we're going to do together. You mentioned the Innovators for Community Wellness that you're doing with the, uh, well, with Professor Steve Chick in, yep. in the UAE at, at Abu yep. Dhabi, where our new yep. campus is. What, uh, that's a new program. When does it start? What are you hoping? Uh, we basically have uh, just signed a statement with the Minister of Health that we would invest as J&J and INSEAD together in the development of such a program because of the high need. It's a pilot, so the pilot will take, care, uh, will take place in November. And after the pilot, we decided basically that we would focus on the United Arab Emirates as a result of it being a pilot. An assessment will follow that pilot, and then the plan would be to expand it to the whole Middle Eastern region. So that's the way how it would work. So what diabetes is one of the main issues. Diabetes is one of the main focus areas, but we don't want to over focus on diabetes. But it, it, because it is so, uh, it has such a high incidence in the region, it is one where you can make quick gains and where the local, I would say the Ministry of Health in the region was very interested in, in opening up this kind of uh, training. The question is, from a political level, is a government, is any governance structure willing to make a, a huge investment in basically wellness and well-being, knowing that the first results may only become visible in the next generation. What is quite interesting is the, uh, what we're going to do now in September this year. It's we we're running a blue ocean strategy exercise that instead of focusing, I mean, you know what we're talking about, I mean, focusing on the non-customer. However, if you use blue ocean strategy thinking and you apply that to developing countries, to emerging markets, where the non-consumer may probably have no choice. But we're sending out teams after the theoretical training. Three teams will be sent out. One will go to the Middle East, another one will go to East Africa, and a third one will go to Turkey. And these field trips will combine INSEAD MBA elects who are currently running in combination with emerging leaders with J&J who come from the different sectors, so consumer medical devices and, uh, and pharma, and they will go on a, what I would say a joint journey of discovery of new territory. It's quite unusual and regardless of the concrete product or service that may or may not be there at the end, I think we will have built for the first time a cadre of 30 emerging leaders in J&J that will be able to think differently and say, well, you know, we may probably have a different business model to approach certain markets in certain contexts. Thank you very much, Frank Wildbert, for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you.